And now on Nights with Steve Price from the 50 Up Club, Christopher Zinn. It's been a big week for 50 Up Club members because the Reserve Bank, of course, cut the interest rate to historical record lows. The banks then pulled a few surprises. Christopher Zinn, good evening. Yeah, and good evening. And look, surprises. I, I tend to like surprises. Hmm. Surprises are powerful. And these are actually... In some ways, a nice surprise, but as with uh, all nice things, the, the silver you have to look behind the silver lining, and that's certainly the case with the rise uh, on, in the, on the deposit rates. It's very interesting to sit back and watch the debate around mortgage rates uh, when you consider, like you, you, like me, at one point we're paying 17% on our home mortgage. Oh, exactly. And now, you know, it, this is the new normal, and, of course, it's going to be very interesting when it goes up again, as it does. How, what sort of buffers or protections people have. But look, it seems that there's, you know, all around the world, we're in a low interest environment. That has all sorts of implications, uh, not just for those paying off homes, but more particularly for older demographics who've already done that, but of course have to find a way to those that actually do and aren't on the part or the full pension, or the full pension uh, you know, what, what sort of investments, where do they put their savings? And uh, bank deposits have up until now been uh, pretty miserable. Well, there's a big change coming on the uh, on the first of January next year when uh, the assets calculations are coming down, and so a lot of people are going to lose part pension or pensions. That's not yet been properly debated, and it'll happen between now and the end of the year. But the cash rate uh, on fixed term deposits, one year and three years, the banks actually went back the other way. Now, uh, many of your members would be pretty happy about that, wouldn't they? I think they would be. And I mean, just to mention in terms of the pension eligibility, there's about 300,000 people affected by that. I, I would wager that a good number of them are not fully aware of the implication. No. Nope. But, but yes, look, it, it will be good because, in fact, actually now the deposit uh, for term deposits, and this is particularly for term deposits, normally longer ones, it's not all term deposits, it's only for, uh, for, new, for new people taking them out uh, you know, new term deposits, yeah. not existing ones. So it's the banks trying to get more money in the door. Exactly, they need to. I mean, one of the reasons is that they have to uh, source more of their funding domestically, and that's due to um, uh, some of the regulation that's being put a, being put on them. Um, but you know, the problem is that uh, you know, and that, so I should say now it's not a problem so much, but annuities and some of the income streams that people have been using for. Um, uh, retirement have now actually been beaten. The, the term deposits at three percent are actually higher than many annuities. So, look, the question is, how long will it last? What are the, uh, you know, is it just going to be for certain amounts? It certainly, you know, I would suggest people should be looking uh, perhaps again at their plan. This might be an area worth taking advantage of, or it might just be a slick marketing ploy to distract from the fact that they didn't pass on the full amount. And I think we need to maintain the rage over that. I should know, but if they put a, a, a term deposit li upper limit? In terms of the amount, yeah. no, I, I, actually, I, haven't, I haven't seen that. But one of the reasons, if you have a very large term deposit amount, i.e. talking half a million or 100,000 or whatever, mm. you can really negotiate those. So term deposits are normally for smaller amounts. But if you have a lot of uh, yeah, if you want to park, if you get stop. nervous about the share market and you're worried about uh, real estate and you want to get, you want to cash up and park it uh, and draw down the income, say you've got a million dollars in your super, um, you, you can negotiate a better rate, can you? Oh, yeah. I mean, you should never take the rate uh, as advertised. I mean, this is one of the things that gives life this whole thing about the standard variable rate. There's a lot of competition for home loans at the moment. You, if you're paying the standard variable rate, it's a joke because they should be giving you a discount, or you should be with other lenders that you know have significantly cheaper home oh, loans. There's so bank. many non-bank lenders. I mean, Liberty Financial is a sponsor of ours. They got there's dozens of them. Yeah, and they're regulated in exactly the same way. They're just the same. They've got to do all the right things. The difference is, of course, that people are used to the banks. They have a bundle of other products. You know, it's hard to get us to shift from the banks. And look, while the banks do many things very well. If it wasn't for those independent non-banks, you can be sure that the rates would be a lot higher. You know, we need their competition. When you did last polled your members on this, they were overwhelmingly describing the low cash rate for fixed-term deposits as a disaster, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, well, that was what they were describing was when the, intra, when the cash rate was cut, it was really a disaster. And that's the flow-on, really, with the deposit rates actually have dropped just as far just as fast um, 
uh, and that was a disaster, 50%. Some 21% thought it was good, and perhaps that indicates a tale of people who haven't paid off their home loan or might have some other sort of loans. But, yeah, it is. It makes it very hard to plan. And, of course, one of the risks is that people seeking returns to get a comfortable retirement can either fall for some of the more shonky sort of uh, promotions and uh, property spruikers out there or take you know take part or invest in in things that are riskier they might be completely kosher but essentially if you want to get a more decent return it does mean that the risk goes up i think that's an area we need to do some work on because where we're at currently with um with term deposit earnings uh, with superannuation returns dropping uh you know what comes in and fills you know very well from your career what comes in and fills that vacuum uh the shysters and cowboys fire up don't they they are they come and fill a vacuum uh, quicker than in any science you know school science experiment yeah. they're already there and unfortunately uh you know a lot of it is online um a lo- you know the regulators uh, try hard but you know it's hard for them to keep up because these things come from all over the world in all sorts of channels and i can only just say to people uh, you know asic the securities investment commission have a money smart site that's full of complete common sense about investments, and uh, you should be very wary of things that uh, drop in out of the blue, uh, promising great returns. I'm not saying that that's completely impossible, but, uh, uh, you know, (laughs) lots of things are far more likely than others, and the fact that they might actually make you lose money as opposed to make them, I would suggest, was a a much more certain bet. You and I are not financial advisors, but my broad brush advice would be to anybody, if you are promised to earn a return greater than 5%, Look at it twice. Yeah, and, and look, take see, great advice because <laughs> and yeah, and take reliable advice. Is that too and, low? Five? Do you reckon? Well, look again. I'm not. I like you. I'm certainly not a financial. No, but advisor. all we're doing here is warning people. Yeah, exactly. And there's a very look. ASIC have done some very interesting work in terms of financial literacy. Unfortunately, a lot of people do not understand the. Uh, risk and return equation, i.e. the greater the rate that you get on the return, the greater the risk. So that's what you've really got to work out for yourself. But I mean, if it is with a, you know, a proper financial organisation that is properly regulated and is onshore, that does reduce the risk, but not completely. You can still lose your shirt with some of these uh, financial products. Always a pleasure to catch up. Uh, people can see more information at the 50upclub.com. They certainly can. 50upclub.com.au. Good stuff, Christopher. Thanks, mate. I'll talk to you next Thanks, week. Thanks, Yeah, cheers. Bye.